Hey there, it is Sarah Ayler again here. Um, I am the sales and marketing manager for Softlex Company. And if you're not familiar with us, you can check out all of our materials at www.softlexcompany.com. Today I am doing a Softlex Live Design Challenge. Um, I've been doing quite a few of these, so a lot of you are very familiar with the concept, but for anybody out there that is new, um, what I'm going to do is basically open a box, and in fact, it's a blingy Swarovski box today, and uh, I don't know what's inside. We're going to look through the contents of the box, and then we are going to make something um, together using some of the materials in the box. Um, it definitely jewelry related, so <laughs> that'll be exciting. Uh, necklace, earrings, bracelets, something along those lines. Uh, today's partner is Swarovski, uh, Create Your Style, so it is going to be a very blingy, shiny day for sure. Hey, Cindy. Hey, Lydia. I'm excited for today, too. I've been looking forward to this challenge uh, for quite a while now, I had been hoping, you know, that Swarovski would partner with us on um, one of the challenges because I love working with their materials. As most of you know, um, you know, I you'd have to kind of hide under a rock if you're a jewelry maker and don't know Swarovski. Um, they have really great quality crystal beads, and they come out with new innovative styles every single year, and we all love them. So it's gonna be exciting to see what they sent in their box. Hi, Stacy. hi, Sharon. Hi, Nikesha. Yay, look forward to the video too. Hi, Karen, hey, Sharon. Hey, Kristen. Oh, it's gonna be an exciting day here at my office. And if it wasn't already exciting enough, I am actually packing my family up and we are going to be in Northern California for about two and a half months. So my next uh, live design challenge is gonna be from Softlex's home office uh, in about three weeks. So you're gonna see a little bit of a background change, but not much else is gonna change on your end. Uh, but this is my last big day in my own home office. So I got a lot going on and it's been definitely kind of a crazy wild day, but I'm super excited uh, to end um, my time here in the office on the Swarovski note, because, you know, it just doesn't really get much better than working with Swarovski. Hey, Cree Cree. Hey, Sharon. Yes. So oh, I love working or love walking through their store also. Yeah, they have a lot of great materials and they have a great list of authorized dealers. I went through it yesterday and we put together a list of all the companies that sell both Softflex. Hey, Alexandra, nice to see you. Um, to that's all Swarovski authorized dealers that also sell Softlex. So Kristen's going to put a link up and that's going to give you an idea of who those people are. And I'll try to kind of run through the list as we're going through the materials just to sort of perk up your ears to, you know, where you can get both products. Um, so obviously Swarovski doesn't sell directly on their website. Softlex doesn't sell Swarovski crystals. We use them a lot, but we don't sell them. Um, so I'll give you some great dealers that you can work with where you can get both uh, materials, Softlex and Swarovski. Let's see, Stacy's asking, what city in, in Northern California? We're going up to Berkeley. Uh, my husband is going to be getting a degree at UC Berkeley, and um, he is going to be going to the summer session. So we are packing up the whole family for two and a half months, and um, it's probably more personal information than you need, it, but... Uh, that's what's happening. So it's pretty exciting, um, but it's going to be a busy time for us. I'm not moving to California permanently. It's just, for now, it's just a, um, just a temporary thing, but we're looking forward to getting out of that hot summer Phoenix heat. Um, and that, that'll be, it'll be a nice break for sure over the summer. Hey, Kim, you did. You're here live. Awesome. Okay, guys, so I'm going to start flipping the camera around so that we can take a look at what's in this box and uh, we can see, you know, what we're going to do today with whatever Swarovski sent us. I can't wait. I'm so excited. <laughs> hey, Rochelle. Hey, Elena. Okay, so I'm just going to flip you guys a little closer here and uh, 
pop this down. How's everybody doing today? Here we go. Um, let's see. Oh my God, I just figured out how to put you on my TV. Whoa, Jody, that's fancy. That'll be neat. You're gonna get a big screen version. Hey, Andrea, hey, Kim. I know, look at what they sent me. They didn't send me just like a cardboard box that I, you know, take my thing and have to open it up. Oh no, Swarovski blinged out their box, which is awesome. What a nice thing for them to do. Isn't that gorgeous? So let me take this lid off because it's actually, if you can see, it's kind of a box. It has a pretty lid on it. So this is what the lid looks like. Um, so definitely we'll be keeping that and using it for future things. Let me um, turn my chair to here. I can really get involved. Well, Elena, you have such a pretty name. I definitely can read it clearly. Yeah, Nikisha, that's just the box. Can you believe it? That's just the lid. Okay, so are you guys ready? Hey, Andrea, I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm glad you like watching what I do. Um, so this is what's inside the box when I open. Um, so I'm just going to pull out one package at a time, and we can start kind of looking through to see what it is that's in here. And then we'll decide what in the heck we're going to make with this. So we've got 8 millimeter crystals in an iridescent dark blue. Let me grab my scissors so I can pull stuff out. Oh, it does look like it opens up pretty easily. Because we're not going to want to look at it here, right? Let's open that baby up. And we'll see. So this is an eight millimeter crystal, iridescent dark blue. Looks almost like a purple color to me. Let me get those up close so you can see. It looks as if it's a cabochon or it fits into something. It has um, like a little hole on the back where it looks like maybe it's glued into something. That'll be interesting. And I'm just gonna try to keep stuff in the bag so I can keep track of what it is that we're using. So those were a really pretty color. Uh, it says iridescent dark pearl. It's probably, you know, one of their glass pearls with like a coating of some sort would be my guess. Yes, perfect earring studs, yeah, I agree. Okay, so this one's a 12 millimeter iridescent dark blue pearl. And these ones are actual beads that have a hole through the center. They're really neat because they're sort of matte, but they also still have a sparkle to them. Do you guys kind of see that in the camera, how they kind of sparkle um, due to the type of coating that they have on it? See, one half drilled post earring. Yes, Sharon, that's what it looked like. Yeah, it's a really pretty color. It's like a purple blue, which is just really gorgeous. And these have a nice weight to them too. Um, these glass pearls always feel really nice. Love the colors. Yes, you can see the sparkle. Oh good, I'm glad you guys can see how pretty that is. Yes, very shimmery. Definitely would make a great um, a great bead in a necklace. And let's see what else do we have. We have some more in that same color. These are 10 millimeter. And I'm trying to see if there's a note, no note from them. Um, he did ask me if I wanted to know what was in the box. Uh, the gentleman, uh, Ron Rock from Swarovski, and I said, oh, no, don't tell me, because that'll ruin, um, that'll ruin the surprise, but um, I probably should have told him to put a note inside so he could explain 
you know, the process for making these. And maybe they'll jump on here at some point. These would be beautiful for a wedding. Yeah, like definitely a beautiful color. So it's not quite blue. It's not quite purple. It's just like this in between. That's just so pretty. Beth Simmons says, I love Ron. He's so awesome. He is so friendly and so nice to work with. Um, I've really enjoyed getting to know him. Sharon says, gorgeous shape also. Andrea says, yeah, those and the gray. Oh, yeah, really pretty. This with like a gray dress would be gorgeous. These pearls are an unfaceted crystal core center. Hey, Kim. I'm, I'm, do you want to go by Kimberly or Kim? That is my big question. Uh, neat shape. Looks like a lentil shape, Kristen says. Donna says, so pretty. They are. They're really gorgeous. And it is a really neat shape. It's sort of a coin shape. Um, and it, they're 10 millimeter in size if you were wondering what the size is. Really pretty. So I probably can leave some of these out now that I'm kind of seeing what's going on. Um, I think we'll definitely use these in something, right? So let me put these containers over here and we'll keep going. I am going to try to stay organized today, you guys. You know how it always, I post a picture after the show and my desk is like mass chaos. I, I'm going to try not to do that to myself today. <laughs> and a great size for a statement piece, Sharon says. Yes. Okay. So these ones are an eight millimeter, same color, but we're they're smaller rounds. So they're gonna work really nicely with the project too. Yeah, Rochelle, I know. I go a little crazy though on these live design challenges. For some reason, my desk looks 20 times worse than a normal day. Um, so <laughs> but it's usually because I'm just so focused in on making something. Um, really special with you guys. Okay, so these guys are six millimeters. So now we've got six eights and tens, I believe. Um, so we've got a nice variety of sizes to work with. This is the tens here. Uh, let's see, Kim says, I was the only Kim in high school, but now we are taking over the world. Yeah, there's a lot of Sarahs too. Andrea asks, what are you planning on making? I don't know yet, Andrea, because i got to keep opening this box and see what else is in there. Um, but right now, I'm starting to see some sort of a, a pearl necklace for sure. Um, and we'll just have to kind of play it by ear and see what ends up happening here. So we've got our sixes, our eights, and our tens, and they're also available in fours. So we got another size as well. <clears throat> Kim, are these a new product for you guys at Swarovski? Yeah, I love this color too, Rochelle. I couldn't agree more. Oh, new color. This is a pearlescent white. So it's the same same materials we just looked at for the um, half drilled but in an iridescent white look at how those sparkle aren't those so pretty you guys Sharon says maybe some hand knotting you know I don't actually do any hand knotting because I so often use soft flex and even though you cannot soft flex it just doesn't look quite the same between beads um, you know, as a thread would, but I know a lot of people really enjoy that, that process. Let's see, we've got some big 
um, big guys in that pearlescent color. It's so pretty because it, again, um, it isn't like shiny, like, uh, you know, normal pearl. It has more of this just sort of sparkle to it in a matte sort of a way. It's really beautiful. I hope the camera's picking up on how beautiful it is. Looks like it is. Yes. Yes, these are a part of our spring summer 2008 innovation. So like I said at the beginning, um, Swarovski is always coming out with new items. I mean, just on a really constant basis. They are one of the big innovators in the beading industry. And I have really enjoyed um, following their progress. Here are some of those 10 millimeter in that really cool shape, that flat coin shape. Yeah, they do have a satin look, Susie. That's a really great description for them. Um, they are very satiny, and that, that's probably why somebody picked up that they would be pretty for a wedding, because um, they do have that sort of like uh, wedding, you know, almost like a the camera filter that they use on wedding photos. They sort of have that just in their being, um, which is really cool. And I think we see our theme going here. We're getting all the same things in this pearlescent white color. So these are the eight millimeters in that beautiful pearlescent color. I need to move these over, don't I? Love Swarovski, been collecting it for 40 years and still love getting it, Kim says. Yeah, they make really great quality materials. And when you look at their authorized dealer list, which Kristen posted just a little bit ago, but I'm going to kind of read some of these names off, um, they work with great companies, too. Um, for example, in the U.S., they work with Shipwreck Beads, Rio Grande, Rings and Things, Monroe Crafts, John Bead, Fusion Beads, Blue Mud, Beadaholic, Art Beads, and Eureka Crystal Beads. Um, and those are some really stellar companies. Those, I mean, they do work with some other companies I'm not listing, which they're welcome to post links to. Um, but these are the ones that also sell Softlex that I'm very familiar with that I, you know, highly suggest that you purchase from. Um, so they have a great group of people just here in the U.S. And then they have tons. If you're an international viewer, they have tons of authorized dealers, you know, all around the world. And I'll name a few more. These are so pretty. The, these are the four millimeter. I'll name a few more here. Um, for instance, in the UK, uh, the bead shop uh, in Nottingham, the Blue Street Crystals, Cooks and Gold, Jilly Beads are all options. In Japan, Kiwa. And also in Australia, uh, Beads Venue. So that's... Um, yeah, that's a great list of companies where you can get both Softlex and you can get uh, Swarovski as well. Let's see, uh, Ron Rock selected these colors to send. He is a genius. They're beautiful. Um, and like somebody said earlier, he's just such a nice person to work with. Um, what a lovely, lovely person. Ooh, beautiful blues, Veronica says. Kristen says the blue and white are very crisp, summery, and nautical colors. Yes, that's true. I do see a pretty, kind of a pretty nautical design going. Um, so I had pulled out a few things. Um, let me see. I knew, you know, Swarovski's obviously going to send some beads, um, but I figured... I would pull out um, some materials to work with. I was thinking a Tierra cast. Some of their new items would be kind of cool. Um, I've been working with them because I'm going to have some kits on JTV that use a Tierra cast. 
so they have been on the top of my mind recently. Um, I was thinking there might be, you know, some tie-in here where we can use both together. Oh, and there go the little ones. Isn't that the way of it? Okay, so I'm thinking we could do kind of like the idea of this wedding, like thinking about a wedding and how we could make something really pretty for a wedding. Um, there's a couple pretty things in here. So let's think like a bridesmaid. If I were designing for a bridesmaid, what might I want to make? Some pretty earring bottoms. Um, so most of the companies I named also do sell tiara casts. They're another company that it's pretty widespread. It's kind of hard to miss them. Um, hey Lydia, they just sent pearls this time because this is their newer collection. But they did warn me to keep the box because they may at some point send something else for us to look at. Um, and I have tons of, of crystals here, so I'm sure we won't be short on some crystals <laughs> to add in. <laughs> uh, that's never a problem around here. Uh, Meredith says, I love the gorgeous blues of the new pearls. I know. They're really pretty. They're really, really pretty. Um, so I'm just trying to pull out a few things. Just, you know, we don't know exactly what we're going to end up doing ever. Um, but just like a couple of little charmy guys that we can kind of work with and think about as we're going. Um, this is from the Tierra Cast Dolce Vita line, which came out earlier this year. And so there are some options there that could be kind of cool. And if you're having a hard time seeing what I'm doing, you can swipe the comments and then it'll be easier uh, to get a better view of what I'm doing. I'm going to kind of move this stuff up. A little bit because I do tend to work towards my body so I can see um, let's see coin stations would be awesome for the wedding theme by stations do you mean like an invisible necklace where they're anchored in place on the wire um, leave these oh love these pieces from Tierra cast do you use uh, vin vintage components also I do actually and I um, I'm going to have some kits with vintage components too on the JTV show in June. Kim says, I'm sitting with Ron Rock and he said that he will send crystals next time. Oh, that'll be exciting. Well, I'm not short on your typical crystals around here. So I'm going to grab some of those out too. Um, from my handy dandy tray over here. And we'll throw a couple of those in to add some sparkle for our sort of wedding-ish theme here. Um, and you can't have enough Swarovski crystals. They're sort of like a necessity if you're a jewelry designer, I would say. Um, so I tend to pick them up all over the place. Look at this awesome... This, I think, was a discontinued item. Oh, let me see. From Swarovski. Um, you still can't really see it on this black back. Isn't that just gorgeous, though? But they do just like these wild shapes sometimes that I just love. Love, love, love. Okay, so exciting, Sarah. Looking forward to the show. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm just going to pull out couple of little guys too. We'll start kind of putting something together um, for bridesmaids. So let's think about this. If we were to, I'm feeling like this may go in the middle, maybe drop some things down from it. I'm really liking this blue. I, mean, I like the idea of them together, but then I think it does get kind of nautical. Uh, maybe I'll use white soft flex with it. 
um, and that will kind of bring in that white, which I think looks really pretty with it, but it won't be so over the top. Uh, Kimberly says you can go to createyourstyle.com and check out our events and stores tab for a complete list of authorized resellers. Yes, and like I said, I just listed off the ones that sell Softlex, um, but there are quite a few more on the list, especially around the world, um, you know, not just here in the U.S. So definitely check that out. Rochelle says, love Swarovski. I agree, Sarah. Swarovski is a staple, just like Softlex. Oh, thank you, Rochelle. White pearl inside the ring. Hmm. That could look really neat. Yeah, that's pretty. That's really pretty. Let's figure out how we make that happen. <clears> hmm. <throat> Maybe I really like the per this purpley color though. So I kind of like that idea. I'm wondering if I could even find my cramps. It's starting to become a mess around here, you guys. I think I'm losing my ability to keep it clean. Um, I'm wondering if I could even attach this on both sides using the soft flex and suspend it in the middle just to see what that would look like. So I'm going to take a crimp. I'm using a 2x2 two two soft flex crimp tube. Um, I'm using the silver filled. And then I'm, of course, using our soft flex medium, 0 0.019. And I am going to try to crimp this in the center of this tear cast ring and see what it's like, see if it'll work. And just so you guys know, I know you're all commenting fast and furious. I am a one woman show. If I don't see your comment, I do go back through them at the end and I try to answer any questions um, that may have come up that didn't get answered. Um, so don't stop commenting. If I don't see your question, it doesn't mean I won't get to it at some point. The difficulty with this will be getting it in just the right position. So let me cut some, and who knows if this will work, but that's what we're here for, right? Just to sort of play around and see what happens. Um, and I think I'm not going to crimp them until I know I've got it in the right spot. And the nice thing about Swarovski pearls is they all have exactly the same hole size, um, whereas a freshwater pearl, sometimes you can't get them onto a thicker diameter of beading wire, which you really need when you're mixing in things like metals and glass, um, you know, and crystal. Um, so it's awesome when you use a Swarovski pearl and you know you can use the medium soft flex, which is going to be the better diameter. don't know if I'll be able to get the crimpers in there too. That's the second question. Yeah, that's a little tough. There we go. Never know what may or may not work. This is a really pretty pattern on this tiara cast piece. Do you guys see the back of that? So pretty. We'll pull this through. I love the design challenges because we can just sort of play around with things, see what works and what doesn't work. And I love working with like brand new items. Yeah. Okay, so once I cut that off, that'll probably go straight. So let me go ahead and try this. I'm using the Magical Crimpers, which for those of you who aren't familiar, they have a, a little divot on each side that's sort of identical. And when I close it down together, it will create a, sort of like a dome inside the pliers. 
and that dome fits this two by two crimp just perfectly. Let's see if I can get them in here well enough to do this. But you really got to get that crimp centered in order to get it um, crimped. Stacy says, don't be jealous. San Diego has a hotel with an amazing chandelier made of 44,000 Swarovski crystals. Holy smokes. Can you guys imagine what a beauty that must be? Yeah, this is going to be one of my design things that just does not want to work because I can't get in the other way. Let me see if I spin a little bit. Spin the wire a little bit. Yeah, just too hard to get in there. All right, well, we tried it. Have to probably use a craft wire, which would be cool too. I have some of that right here. Let me see if this 20 gauge craft wire will go through the pearls. This is our Softlex craft wire. My spool label is a little funky, so let me fix that a little bit. So our Softlex craft wire, I'm gonna see if this 20 gauge will fit through. If not, I'll have to dig for something a little bit thinner. I'm taking a nylon jaw plier. I just run it across the top of here. And I always like to snip my end so I know I'm starting with a nice flat end. And I'm just going to wrap, well, let's make sure the pearl fits first. And it does. That's the great thing about these Swarovski pearls, I'm telling you, is the whole size is so much easier uh, to work with. I'm just going to do a quick wrap around and kind of keep it messy. I'm not going to, you know, doesn't need to look really fancy or pretty. Um... I like more of an organic look. Even when I'm doing something like wedding jewelry, I like things to look handmade. So I'm just pulling it around so it meets on the back end and then I'll just snip. I should have left one side a little longer, right? I'm having one of those days. I'll just tug that down and then we can Add our bead and I normally would have left one wire longer but I didn't this time so we're going to just wrap this one little wire around and then we can kind of center that in there there we go so that's a nice way that you could add a pearl to one of these tear cast pieces. Yeah, normally I would have been symmetrical and wrapped three on both sides, but I actually kind of like the idea of this being the top or the bottom, probably the bottom, and then doing some soft flex up from it. So sometimes mistakes happen and then they still look good. So it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think it looks cool too. Um, I don't know if we can fit. We'll probably do one more size right below it. I'm gonna look for my hairband real fast and get my hair back out of my face. Okay, so let's do one more and then um, we can think about how we want to connect. Um, but I do, I think it looks kind of cool. Let's do another piece of wire. Shipwreck Beads does have Swarovski. Yes, they were on the list. And they carry Softlex too. We just did a design challenge with them not long ago. So again, I'm just doing a wire wrap. Let's 
and I'm using our 20 gauge Softlex craft wire. Our craft wire is a copper based wire. This particular one has a silver plating and then it has like a polyurethane coating which keeps it from tarnishing, um, but even nicer, it makes it hypoallergenic because um, no metal ever really touches the wearer's skin. Nylon jaw pliers are a dream when you need to straighten the wire out. I'm just sort of matching the same pattern that I did on the bigger one. Snipping off the wire, tucking down. Yeah, if you can't see the full picture, you're on a phone, just swipe left or right, and that'll take the comments out of the way. It's hard for me not to work right in front of me because um, I need to be able to see what I'm doing. So sometimes I work at the bottom of the video for sure. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap around this bottom, and I know I don't need too much wire to do that. So we'll just snip off this and use the chain nose pliers to finish that off. There we go. And then I can just snip, snip where the two wires meet. Make sure that's, don't want it to get caught on anything. That's always the thing to think about when you're doing any wire wrapping and you're finishing off is to feel that edge and make sure it's not gonna get caught on somebody's clothing. Be a problem at some point. Okay, cool, so we've got that going. I really like that for sure. Um, and I did like these big guys. I'd kind of like to, maybe we work them in up here on the top somewhere. Let's see, I'm kind of just throwing some stuff together here to see what this might end up looking like. Um, the white will look so pretty. I don't know if you guys have ever used white Softlex under the clear crystal, but it really makes them sparkle. Um, it's really nice. It's really nice to work with. I do still kind of like these. Let's see. What do you guys think? Should we keep it all in this blue, or should we go into a blue and a white? Um, I kind of think to keep it all in this blue color, um, but I'm open to your ideas. Let's see, what do you guys think? Blue and white, or should we keep it all in the blue, beautiful blue color? Veronica says she needs pliers. Cindy says, I just love the craft wire. Donna votes blue. All blue will be classier. Yeah, I kind of feel that way too. I'm trying to decide the shapes that I want to. Let's see, I really like this coin shape a lot. I'm not sure that I like the crystal every other one. so hard to decide when there's so many options. <laughs> Keep it blue. Okay. Blue it is, you guys. We'll use the white ones for something else later. I'm just unsnipping some of these other blues so we can kind of play around with it. We can always do one of these guys up here, too, to sort of tie in the dangle at the bottom, kind of like the idea of that. Hmm. So 
somebody said use the white instead of the crystals. Well, I kind of like that. Hmm. How are you guys feeling about that? Using Sharon had suggested use the white rather than the crystals. Um, or I can do, I mean, I kind of like that. And then I connect up to this guy here. I kind of, I got to watch, um, Beadshop.com's video yesterday about soft flex. And if you haven't seen it, I just, I highly suggest it. It's such a fantastic video with Kate and Janice. Um, but Janice talked about how she sketches and paints these beautiful jewelry making ideas. And um, I thought, oh, it's so neat to see someone else's process for making jewelry because this truly is my process. I take out a bunch of things and I sort of just move them around until I feel happy <laughs> with, with what's going on in general. And then I start putting it together and sometimes it will morph or change after. Um, but I do really, I like the movement of moving things around and adjusting. And I could just, I don't think I could ever be a sketching designer, um, but it's, it was, fascinating to see what she does and it just um her artwork itself for making jewelry was just gorgeous um i really like these flat guys so i want to get those in for sure and i kind of am thinking of like what it would be like to have like a trail of these at the bottom But I'm not too sure about that yet. Okay, so I know I like this. So I can start kind of putting that together. Um, especially this portion here. For sure. I could even do something like that at the bottom would be really cool. So I wonder if I should connect these like this. <clears throat> trying to decide how to put the how to place these because when I connect here that's going to be a little tricky with the soft flex so I almost have to connect on both sides which isn't a bad thing maybe I'll use a two hole bead lord knows I have enough two hole beads around here um, from the book that we're writing I could probably find something that would work Horizontally looks good, Sharon says. Well, it would be easier. I just, I worry about it being uneven. But it does look nice. It doesn't look bad. That's true. Let me just see which uh, two hole beads I have that might work. Oh. In a design like this, where we're... Oh, I might like the rulas. I have some pretty gray rulas that might. I could do something like that down there. Let's see. How did I have it? I have to go like this, too. So what do you guys think? Do you like vertical or do you like it horizontal? Let's see, Amanda says vertical. Vertical because of the three in one wraps, right? That's how I kind of feel too. It would feel a little awkward. Um, feel a little awkward, I think. Vertical, horizontal. So I think I can connect with the soft flex. I'm just going to, I'm basically going to do like a double connector on either side. 
The other thing I can do is I could cut it so it's just one wrap. Um, but still, I would have to connect on both ends for it to like really make sense. Um, regardless. So I'm going to leave the three wraps. And maybe we can work this in somewhere up here, too. These guys. Have you guys used these Rula beads? I got these from Fusion. And um, we use them in the book that's about to come out in the next few months that Kristen and I have been writing. Um, so they're really nice. They're two whole beads if you haven't seen them. And they're sort of like a little cylinder, and they're really easy to work with. Do you have any metallic silver soft flex? I do. Yeah, I was thinking white um, with this particular project, but the silver would probably look really pretty too. I could definitely think about the silver. Um, this is what the white's going to look like. Let me grab a spool of silver out of my Softflex box. It's the silver. It's our Extreme um, 925 Sterling. And so it is a copper alloy base. And then it has this beautiful sterling silver plating and a clear uh, nylon coating over the top of it. So white and sterling don't always look that different, um, but it does have a little bit more of a metallic color. Um, yeah, I think the sterling's nice. I think that that was a great suggestion. So let's try that. Find my... My plan to keep things clean did not... Oh, is there more stuff in the box? Oh my gosh, you guys. I got so excited about making my design, I missed a whole other color in the box. This color is iridescent light blue, and it's probably my favorite of the three, of course. Let's pull those out. And look at them. I got so into the design. I was like, to heck with the box. Look at this color. That's beautiful. Here, let me put it with the blue for comparison and the white for comparison. It's like a really pretty light blue, but it also has that beautiful iridescent quality. That's the one you want, Kim, this lighter blue. It's really pretty. Really, really pretty. Yeah. How did I miss that? And Ron, you didn't say anything. You should have told me I was missing a whole section. So we have all the same items um, that we got in the other colors in this beautiful iridescent light blue. And... Um, yeah, that's gorgeous. I'm glad I noticed that. I was about to just move the box out of the way and I realized there was still something in there. Okay, so let's start putting this puppy together. Uh, let's see. Let's see, what do we wanna do here? I think I'll start down here at the bottom and I'm thinking I can what I'm going to do down here is I can probably want to make sure it faces the right direction. That's always the trick, too. I might need to get a jump ring for this particular item. And I have them out here just in case I needed them. And there they are. Find just a basic jump ring. That I can add to this. So if you don't normally use jump rings or haven't before, you sort of open them um, from side to side 
me see if I can get this to focus in on me. There we go. Okay, and um, I usually like to use two pliers, chain nose pliers, that way you can open and close them. Um, you don't really wanna open them outwards because it ruins the shape. Come on, camera. It ruins the shape of the uh, jump ring, so you just sort of open them side to side. You're all glad we noticed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. So I'm just gonna close this jump ring back up. Same way with my chain nose pliers. And it's still not quite closed. You wanna make sure it's all the way closed, otherwise you're gonna have some issues with it. So I think that'll help for that to hang the way that I want it to. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and string my wire. That's still not quite closed all the way. I'm going to hang my wire through that pendant, and I'll take both wires and string them through a crimp tube. Or actually, I won't even need to do that. Let's just go right through the rula. I know, Kim, I get sidetracked easily. I was like, I love this blue, let's just start making something <laughs> right now. Okay, so you can kind of see what I did there. I just strung the two wires through the ruler bead, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put a crimp on each one, and I'll go through this to attach it on each side of the wire wrap. So I'm using a two by two crimp with the medium wire and the sterling silver, but you could use white for sure. I'm just gonna go to the side of the component that we made, and then I'll pass the wire back into the crimp tube. It's hard to see. Um, this looks like it's not gonna. Make sure I have a good working crimp here. And we want to look which side we want to be our front. And I think I want that to hang sort of in the back. So when I attach this, I'm going to make sure I'm attaching it in the right way. To the crimp tube. And I'm just going to sort of pull this down. Does that look right? Let's make sure I got it right. Um, yeah, this side. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to take my magical crimpers and I'll do some crimping to anchor that in place on the wire. Are those rings opened or closed? I like the texture. They're closed. They are Tierra cast rings from their Dolce Vita line. So when you go to crimp, I showed you earlier, and there's lots of great videos on our YouTube page too if you missed it, you're just going to let that crimp settle inside the divot, inside the crimp tube, and then you're just gonna um, compress. When you do that, it creates sort of like a little ravioli with four little corners. I'm gonna turn it on its side Maybe I didn't show you because I was having issues with the ring. I'm gonna turn it on its side and I'm gonna compress again. I'll just go around it a few times, kind of tightening down, compressing. The idea is that you're compressing the metal of the crimp into the nylon coating of the wire. I'm tightening it all down and when you do that, it becomes a round bead. So it started off as a tube and becomes a round bead. Now I'm gonna do that same thing on this other side. And um, you can just trim off your extra wire right at that crimp tube. Don't worry about that. So let me do it on the second side. I'm gonna pull my chair back up again. And Put 
putting my crimp tube on the wire. I'm going to pass through my ring and then I just pass the wire back into the 2 by 2 millimeter crimp tube. These are Softflex crimp tubes. It's important to use really good quality crimps. And not to say Softflex is the only company with good quality crimps, but they are, they are excellent crimps and you can trust them. Um, so you can kind of see how that's going to look now that I've pulled it together. I'm just going to go ahead and do the crimping. And try to get your wires so they're side by side in the crimp tube. It gives you a nice straight connection. Um, I can't always do that. And this is the trick is always like trying to get into these small spaces. But I usually can figure out a way to make it work. <laughs> usually I can do it. So let's see if I can get this the other direction too. Yep. compressing and I'm just going to try to go around it in a number number of different directions trying to make sure that I've rounded it in the best that I can and once I'm done with that I can go ahead and cut off my extra wire and then I've got my bottom to the connection I'm going to do the same thing here to connect these two guys together or a similar idea um, trying to think of exactly how I want to do it because again I've got one thing in the center so I want to I might do two different connectors to make that work um, I wonder if I can even go through you know, not very easily Okay, so let's try it and see what's going to happen here. I might have to play around with this to make it cooperate. Trim off a little bit of our wire. So much for not making a mess. I, you guys can't see this, it's off camera, but when I picked up my bag of seed beads, um, a tube of bright yellow seed beads that I just purchased yesterday, <laughs> went flying so there are yellow seed beads all over all over the place welcome to my life Rochelle says I get persistent when I'm beading too most of the time I'm successful yes I I get an idea and then I'm like I am gonna make this work somehow and actually I really usually like how it turns out um if I can make it work so it's worth the process. I might even add in, um, since we're already going to be doing a connection here, if we add in a couple more of these guys. Let me see. I can do it that way and put another one of these in. Let's see how they sit next to each other, if they're going to be kind of funny like that. Or I can do these guys down here. Mm. No, I think I just like the silver in this case. Needs to be something really small if it's gonna go there. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm, I have my two by two millimeter crimp on my wire. I'm going to go into my ring and I'm going to start attaching. And I am going to just go ahead and use my pliers here to attach my crimp tube. And I'll just trim off my extra wire. Go. And I'll string this 
guy through and attach up here. Now make sure you attach the right way that you want it. Once you crimp, you can't go back. So that's the tricky part. I'm gonna put another two by two crimp onto here and I'm gonna string through this top loop and attach. Pull this fairly tight. Um, I want it to be kind of a similar size as some of the other loops. So I'm just sort of fiddling with it so it looks kind of similar. And I'm going to go ahead and get my crimpers in there. Crimp. Crimp. Trim. So let's see if this works if I do a connector on the other side too. I like the idea with the double spacers and the crimps together. Thanks, Bethany. Thanks for watching. I really like how these beautiful pearls are looking in the middle of these tiara cast rings. Um, I think. I don't remember which viewer had that suggestion, but that was brilliant. They look really pretty, especially that blue, because it's just, it's like it needs to be framed because it's so pretty. <clears throat> okay, so I want it to be a similar size to that one, so I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger of a connection. Okay, and straighten out my wires and crimp. Okay, and then I'll string my wire through my ruler. One more connection, we're almost there. We'll see how it looks. I got my crimp tube on. I'm gonna pass the wire through the ring back into the crimp tube. Well, Bethany, Bethany says, I haven't strung beads in a very long time. This makes me want to string something. Well, that is the goal. I want, and not just string something, but I mean, I'm doing these videos for a lot of different reasons, but I really love doing them because I want to inspire you guys to get out there and make stuff too. Um, and just to see like all the neat and creative things that the various companies in the industry are doing, uh, and Swarovski definitely being one of them. Um, I think that's the great thing about these design challenges is that ability to just see what's out there to use um, that's different and new. Okay, so I got my crimping plier in there just barely. We'll see if I can get a good solid crimp here. I'm going to come in at it at a different angle and see if I can yep, round it in. I've gotten a lot of um, experience doing crimps. In the last few weeks I've made so much jewelry. One day earlier this meet week I made um, eight pieces of jewelry in one day. <laughs> and that was with some instructions as well. And pictures and stuff so I'm just getting my cutters in there so I can get as close of a cut as possible and there we have the bottom of our necklace which I think looks so cool it's very unique different than anything I've made lately um, I love the addition of that pearl into the ring and the craft wire and then being able to connect it with these double connectors um, 
through the rula beads is kind of cool. What a neat, um, what a neat concept we've come up with here. So now we can go ahead and start connecting on the back end here. And I'll just do one of these. You can kind of see how I'm planning on doing this. Um, I'm tempted to just to just um, weave the wire through there. Uh, let's see. Let me make sure I have enough extreme wire here on hand in that silver color. I've been making so many pieces of jewelry, I'm starting to run out of things. I have another spool here. Let me see if I've got enough that I could double it at least for the bottom. I think I could figure that out probably. Okay. Let me make sure I have two. Okay, so off screen what you're not seeing me do is I'm measuring <laughs> measuring my wire um, to see if I have enough here that I can um, do a double wire up the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wire, I'm going to attach it to the top of this sort of like long pendant that we made, and I'm going to take both wires and string it through my 2x2 two two crimp tube, and I'm actually just going to center that all the way to the bottom. And it doesn't need to be super tight, it's just connecting, so it can be kind of loose, it can move around, there's nothing wrong with... Uh, letting your piece have some room to move. In fact, that's usually a good rule of thumb that you want it to move around. Um, for anybody that has joined us since I you know, explained magical crimping, I'll do it one more time. There are two little holes on either side that are identical and this crimp tube fits inside of it just perfectly. You go ahead and compress and it creates sort of what looks like a little ravioli you compress again, and you can just kind of go around it, tightening it down. You want to make sure you're using a good quality 2x2 two two millimeter crimp tube. And um, I'm using medium soft blacks in our extreme um, brand. Okay, so what I was thinking is I might be able to, well, I didn't check to see if I could string both wires through here. That might be the tricky. Two 019s might be a little bit much for a pearl. Hmm. So that changes it, of course. So I'll just trim off one of these guys. And we'll do the one wire approach. Easy enough. So I've got my crystal, got my pearl, and I've got my crystal. And bring this up closer to the top. And we're just gonna attach up to this ring here now. What I had been thinking about doing was weaving the two wires in and out of the ring, um, but that's just not gonna work with that big pearl and I don't wanna change that part of the design at this point. So we will just work with it. And I'm going to attach you want it to be kind of a similar size to the one at the bottom so you just sort of eye it out you know, I'm looking at the loop size that's down here versus the loop size that's up here. Just kind of a similar size is good. Get your wires so they're as side by side as they can be. Kind of just fidgeting with it at this point. And compress, compress and around it, tightening it all down, and then I can trim off my extra wire. 
So we've got the beginning here. I'm going to do the same thing up the back on this side. I'm going to use this longer wire so I know. So I'm going to do one side and then I'll go ahead and move on to a pair of earrings or something else um, to go with it. And I can finish the other side later on after the video. So again, I kind of want to even these guys out. Straighten my wires. Bethany says, I haven't crimped in so long. I usually just smush them with pliers. Yep, I know a lot of people do that. You have to be real careful with crimping um, because the crimp often does hold the whole thing together. Um, and it, there is a little bit more of a chance that it'll slip or slide if you're not using an actual crimping plier. Um, so I think on this Side, I am just going to string these beads on and then maybe anchor them in place and then just let the silver wire go up the back end. So it's going to look something like this, and I'll come around and I'll complete the other side. You guys see that okay? I'm gonna come around and complete the other side over here. Um, I can even bead stopper this so we can look at it a little bit better. On this side. Where's my handy bead stopper? There's my handy bead stopper. Awesome, you guys. I really like how this is turning out. So I'll go ahead and crimp this in place because I don't want those to slide around. I'll just crimp it straight onto the wire. And then um, I'll do a clasp in the back. And then I'll do just a similar style up the other side. And I'll take a photo and post that so you guys can take a good look at it. Um, but this would be pretty in any of the three colors of Swarovski crystals that they sent. Um, I could totally picture this in this beautiful blue color, too, or this pearlescent white color would be really pretty as well, um, and you could even change the color of the crystals, or you could patina um, the tiara cast pieces if you wanted to add in color there if you were doing the white a pearl rather than the dark blue. Um, we do, Bethany, we do not sell uh, tiara cast pieces and we do not sell Swarovski crystals. However, a lot of the authorized distributors that sell both Softlex and Swarovski um, do sell tiara cast. Some that I can suggest to check out are Shipwreck Beads, Rio Grande, Rings and Things, Monroe Crafts, Fusion Beads, Blue Mud, Beadaholic, Art Beads, and Eureka Crystal and Beads. So those are some good options. Almost all of those probably sell all three brands. Um, so you can get all product, all the products at the same time. Now, Ron and Kim, are these uh, new pearls available at those locations now? Um, I know it's a newer product, but I wasn't sure if they're actually out on the market for sale at this point. Thanks, Shannon. I think it looks great too. So I think we have a little time. I'm just gonna put together a quick pair of earrings um, to go with it. We'll do that and then um, I will have to clean up this bead table again. <laughs> oh good, Kim. They are all available at, um, at those authorized distributors and I saw that she posted a list again of all the authorized distributors there are plenty that I am not naming um, that don't sell Softlex so I'm naming the ones that sell Softlex and Swarovski and I would make a, 
a pretty safe assumption that a lot of them are going to carry Tierra Cast as well. It's a pretty recognized brand. Okay, so let's do a quick pair of earrings. I was thinking about using these guys here. So they kind of have a similar theme um, to our, I wonder if I have enough links that I could do one of those caged pearls. Let me see if I have some more round ones here. What do we got? What do we got in here? Oh, I've got a couple of these. Do a caged pearl in the earring too. That would be kind of cool. Maybe we'll do the horizontal for those that really liked that horizontal version. Um, so again, I've got my 20 gauge Softlux craft wire and I'm just going to, yeah, I love the squares too. The Tierra cast squares, they're really pretty. I'm just gonna snip off a piece and we can kind of work from there. Let's see, we were using this size here, I think. So we'll stick with that same size. And I think I'm just gonna do one wrap around this time and keep it kind of simple on both sides. So I'm just taking my wire. I tend to use my fingers, but it is a lot easier <laughs> if you just <laughs> grab your pliers and use them. I don't know why I always wanna use my fingers for things. Ooh, I kind of like the side better. Let's do. The two sides are different too, um, which is something to think about. There, there we go. When you're buying these little tear cast rings, the two sides have different patterns on them. Well, I want to get in this flat way here. So I'm just snipping off my end, my fancy dancy cutters here, and I'm gonna just flatten that out. <clears throat> Let's run our nylon jaw pliers over it one more time. And we'll add another one of these beautiful, beautiful pearls. And I am using the six millimeter size. Want to get it right in the middle. We'll just go around this end. Here's my pliers at. Put that nice in the center there nicely. There we go. I'm just gonna tug that down and I can trim off. What is the name of the blue color? The dark blue color is iridescent dark blue. The lighter blue color is iridescent light blue. So I'm using the dark blue now, but this other, let me get one of the bigger beads out. This other blue is called uh, the light blue. And they all have sort of like a purple, green, like just a beautiful, almost like an Aurora Borealis effect to them. Um, that's really neat. It's They're really pretty. Okay, so we've got this. We're going to use that for our earring. We're going to use it this way, though. We'll make one more of those for the other side, and then we'll go ahead and connect them. Um... Let me get another piece of craft wire. If you weren't here earlier, the craft wire is a copper based wire. And um, this one has a silver plating and then it has a clear nylon coating, which is what makes it hypoallergenic and non tarnishing. And again, let's just use your pliers, Sarah. Wait, I want it to go, I want it to go the other way. 
want it to go this way. Okay. That's what tools are for. You don't have to work so hard. Well, you don't have a lot of user error. <laughs> Cindy says, pretty, thank you. Yeah, I think this color is just, it's hard not to make something pretty when you're using pretty beads. It makes life a lot easier. Snip my wire off again. Always check the back, because you don't want that to get caught in someone's hair or if they're wearing it on someone's clothing, just wanna sort of slide that in and make sure that there's no sharp edges sticking out. String my bead. Does the nylon coating keep it from getting nicked too? Um, well, the craft wire doesn't have a nylon coating like the, um, the Softlex wire does, the beading wire. It has a polyurethane coating and it does help it to not get nicked. Um, you know, you can really do quite a bit of like bending with the wire and you don't have to worry about it getting marred or um, having nicks in it. If you're really rough with it though, it will nick it. Um, you do have to have some caution. Pull that nice and tight. There we go. Just trying to make sure it can move around in there. Great. Okay, so now all I need to do is cut off my extra wire. And tuck that in. And then we'll start putting this together. I want this to be nice and in the center. It's caught on the grooves a little bit there. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna push it up like I did the other one. There we go. Okay, so we've got our two pieces, and now we're just gonna kind of put them together um, using some more of the extreme soft wax. So I'm gonna do a similar connection down here, um, but not with a rula bead. I wonder if I should do like a clear crystal. I could do a big. Am I getting too crazy, guys? Hmm. I think that might look nice. I may not need it up here at the top. I might just do like a jump ring, but I like it down here. I kind of like the bigger. Okay, so we've gone through my <laughs> my normal design process of moving everything around, making a decision. I'm gonna snip a little bit of this wire off. Oftentimes I work right onto the spool of wire, but it's a little more difficult um, because of the position of the tripod here for me to get in there um, and do that. So I'm just gonna go through the whole of this tiara cast piece back into the crimp tube. pull this down. Um, you always want to leave a little room, little wiggle room so it can move around. And I'm going to use my same pliers. Same idea as before. Just crimp this. And you could use regular crimping pliers too um, and a crimp cover if you wanted or just leave it as a tube. These are just nice because they turn it into such a beautiful little round bead. It just makes it so easy. I use them as you know, if you watch these videos regularly, I use them pretty often. I'm gonna slide in as close as I can with the cutters. I'll go ahead and string my Swarovski crystal, clear crystal, and I'll do the same thing on the other end to attach up to here. And I'm just going to kind of pull this down to the crystal and keep 
adjusting until I can get this to the right place that I want it down here at the bottom and this is a space where I may be a little tighter about what I'm doing because I want it to hang in a certain position so I'm gonna go All right, I think I've got that where I want it, so I'm going to go ahead and crimp. Put this down here in the center. There we go. And then I just need to trim. Great. And I think I'm just going to do a jump ring at the top to attach to an ear wire, but um, let's see what that looks like and decide. Or do I have an ear wire that's the right size is the other question. <clears throat> let's look and see what I've got. Let's see. Definitely the bigger round ones balances it. Yeah, I like it. I like how that turned out. I like how that is looking. So to attach this on the top, I don't really want to do another bead at the top. I'm thinking just a jump ring, which I had taken out. There they are. I have kind of a couple big ones here that might work well for this. When Shipwreck Beads did their video, they sent me this bag of random jump rings, and it's been super helpful. I have used them on all sorts of different projects. So thank you, Shipwreck Beads. And they're on the list for selling both Softlex and Swarovski, so you can also get your jump rings while you're there. And I bet they sell Tierra Cast, so. Looks great just like that. Yeah, I don't want to add anything more to it, really. Um, the only thing is this, this does not match the ear wire. I don't like that, so. Let me look and see if I have any ear wires that are more of an antiqued color. Oh, does Tierra Cast do ear wires? Looks like a good question for them. And I don't hear on hand, I have these guys, but those are, let's see if I like them better. So it's just such, I mean, I guess it does match the bright silver down here. Let's just try it. Stop being so finicky about things, huh? Okay, so I've got my two pairs of chain nose. I'm going to open up my jump ring. I'm going to grab this. And then I'm going to slide my ear wire on. Am I going to like the direction that's going is the next question because that's sideways. So we got to fix that too, probably with a smaller jump ring. And close this up. I wonder if I would like a um, craft wire loop at the top, if that would make me happier. Might be something I have to play around with after. Call it mixed media, yes. That's what I'm saying. There's a back in my shipwreck beads jump ring container. <laughs> Grabbing out jump rings. Here we go. Do a couple little ones and see if I like that. So unlike Janice at beadshop.com, um, I am I am a I do things as I'm doing them. I'm not good at doing artwork ahead of time, but I like I said, that video was just really fascinating to me to see her process um, 
just creating this like sort of just gorgeous artwork of jewelry that you know she may make I think she said she used it more for inspiration you know than anything I highly suggest if you haven't seen that beachshop.com video it is on our page and of course this is one that's not open it's on our page um, just below this video if you get a chance do go and watch it and they're doing part two next week on the beadshop.com Facebook page next Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. And it's all about Softflex. Um, and they're using it and how they feel about it. So I feel like I need to play around with the top a little bit more. I'm not real happy with how this big jump ring looks. Maybe it's too big of a jump ring. Maybe it's the metal color. Um, I'm not too sure, but I am gonna play around with that some more. And and I put the ear wire on backwards too. I'm gonna play around with that some more and finish up the second one. Um, and I'll go ahead and finish up this guy too while I'm at it. So I'm gonna flip you around just so that I can say goodbye and you can see my enormous mess that I've made. <laughs> that I've made um, on my desk, you can see. Um, all my crazy soft looks, all my yellow seed beads all over the place. Um, yeah, so I got a lot of cleaning up to do in addition. <laughs> but that just means I had a whole lot of fun, right? Um, so I just wanted to thank you guys for joining me again for the latest Softlex design challenge. A big thank you to Swarovski for sending these beautiful pearls in you know, amazing different colors that we could work with and make something new and fun. So I am going to be uh, away for about the next three weeks. The next live video is going to be on a Wednesday at one o'clock. It's Wednesday, May 31st, and it's with Fusion Beads, and it'll be from the Softlex home office. So it's going to be a little bit different than normal. I'm not quite sure what it'll be like, but I'm excited to try it from somewhere else. It'll be uh, at an additional challenge, <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so definitely do check out the list of fantastic authorized distributors that sell both Softlex and Swarovski. Hopefully Kristen can put that link up one more time. Um, there are you know, quite a few of them around the world uh, where you can get both products and probably Tierra Cast too. Um, so check that out and hopefully you'll get a chance to work with these amazing pearls. Uh, that Swarovski sent me. So take a look at our website, www.softlexcompany.com, and you can always look at their website, which is www.create-your-style.com, and I've been on there quite a bit over the last few days preparing for this video, and they have a great deal of content there, um, you know, from project ideas and inspiration and just, just really beautiful stuff to look at, as well as their full authorized distributor list, which is much larger than uh, the folks that I named all on my own. Um, so thanks for spending some time with me today, and I look forward to seeing you guys in about three weeks from the home office with a box from Fusion Beads. Talk to you guys later. Bye, guys.